All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm excited to share all these things with you. As I was watching Matt do such a great job, I realized that I prepared zero jokes for this talk. But I did bring stickers, so maybe that's a consolation prize. So if you want to leave because there's no jokes, I guess I, I won't take it as, a, as an offense. Um, but anyway, I have a lot to share with you guys, so let's get started. Um, the name of the talk is POI Data um, Illuminated. We're going to cover a little bit about POI data. I'm Diana Shkolnikov. I'm CTO and co-founder of StreetCred, which is a new startup. We incorporated it in March, so really uh, right out of the gate. Um, if you want to know more about what we're doing, check out our website. But basically, we're building a self-sustaining open protocol for POI data collection and distribution. And it's going to have crypto incentives for contributors. And uh, the folks that want to consume the data will be using those same um, crypto um, uh, economics uh, factors. I hope you're intrigued. Like I said, check out our website. Come ask me questions afterwards. We'll hang out, um, do like a birds of a feather later today. Uh, so I'm happy to discuss what that's going to look like. Um, but it's all about POIs. So we're really focused on this one particular data set. It's a really problematic data set. If any of you have tried to contribute that sort of data to um, OSM, you know that it changes frequently. It's not like roads. Once you map a road or a building footprint, a lot of that stays the same over time. POIs change all the time. Hours change. The categories change. Uh, phone numbers. All of these, this metadata associated with it changes. And so it's a really hard data set to get and then to maintain. Um, and we talk to stakeholders of this data all the time as part of what we're doing. You know, we talk to contributors of this data, developers of this data, providers of this data. Um, and while they have different priorities and different concerns, they all boil down to the same basic factors. Um, people care about geographic coverage. They want to know where the data is good, where the data is not good. Um, they want to know if the data is fresh and how fresh. Um, they want to know quality and validity. They want to know that this data is not um, duped and, the, and it's not, um, you know, things that nobody cares about or things that are out of date or tagged incorrectly. Um, and data accessibility. People want to know that they can use their, uh, the data that they're licensing in an accessible way in their software. Uh, and then contributors want to know that what they're putting out there is going to a good cause or is, is accessible to the community and it will be used in a responsible way. Um, and so for this talk, I really want to focus on the geographic coverage bit. Um, it's a really important aspect to this data, and understanding coverage is going to help unlock a lot of different factors in what we're doing, and I think it helps un unlock a lot of different um, factors in OSM as well. Uh, and unfortunately, for POI specifically, there hasn't been any good tooling around a data analysis, particularly in this uh, in the POI data set. Um, you'll see analysis of road coverage. Um, and that, you know, that's something that's been covered a lot at these conferences and in and around. And that's great work. Um, but I tried to find things that have been done in the POI space, and I really I struggle to find something. I know there's actually a few great talks coming up uh, tomorrow here. I'm excited to, to see um, talking about similar, uh, similar analysis, which is really great see, to see the community responding to this kind of um, the need for this kind of data. Um, what you'll find if you're licensing data or if you're looking at a data set of POIs, people will often tell you an absolute number. They'll say, we have 100 million POIs in the United States. That doesn't really tell us anything, right? So I pulled, um, I pulled all of the POI data from OSM. I actually used the Peleus GeoCoder uh, OpenStreetMap um, importer. Julian, thanks for maintaining that. Um, cleaned it up a little bit. It's anything that's categorized as a POI, as a restaurant, a bar, a doctor's office, a building that has a, a type on it. Um, transit data in there as well. And we came up with 39,000 plus, just a little over 39,000. Uh, show of hands if you think that's good for New York City. Yeah, <laughs> right out there. Um, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to say, right? You, you, the answer is, it depends. Um, the number seems large, but is it really for New York? Like, what's the area? So this is what people are seeing when they purchase data currently, um, or when they're trying to use an open data set. So I know we're all map people, so map it or it didn't happen. So that's all the data that, um, that I pulled out using the OpenStreetMap importer. You can see, I mean, it looks pretty dense, right? The colors are there. <laughs> like, um, there's probably a better ways to map this with heat maps and other things. But even this doesn't really get to 
answering questions like, if I'm a contributor, what areas need contribution the most? Um, or if I'm a developer, where is the user going to have the best experience? Where are their duplicates? All these things that are not clear from looking at that map. Um, so I think what we really want is some sort of a progress bar. We want to be able to see, hopefully on a granular level, um, how well is a particular region doing? Is, is it being filled in? Is it oversaturated? Um, that's the kind of thing that we'd love to get to. It's, at least at street cred, that would be the next step going from where we are now, which is not having any insight. But to get a progress bar, um, you basically need the denominator, and we're lacking that denominator. We don't know what the expectation is, and so we can't say how close we are to a goal. And with POIs, it's a challenging thing to predict. But we're going to try. Um, so doing it as a, on, a, on a large scale, uh, with covering a really large area is not going to give us the best accuracy. So from different trial and error, we decided to use geohash to just, uh, geohashes to split the world up into boxes. And we played with different precision, um, and we thought that precision six got us the best uh, results, and it seemed like granular enough, but not too granular, where we could still infer things. Um, and this is what geohashes look like for those not familiar. It's a way to divide the world up into little boxes, and you can see this bigger one. Oh, you probably can't, you can't see my pointer. But the bigger outer box is the five digit, uh, five uh, decimal precision, and the smaller one in the corner is six, and then there's a tiny one, which you can't see, but you can see the arrow, that's seven. So we went with six um, to try to cover New York City. And then if you go with small enough boxes, you can aggregate those and get the bigger average over a larger area if you wanted to. So we divided the world up, and then we made an assumption that if a road exists, then a POI might exist on the road, and that POIs wouldn't exist without roads, because if nobody can get to that place, then is the, you know, is the place really there? And this is a naive assumption, but it's a way for us to get a baseline of, um, of these expectations. So you can imagine it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. A place exists, and so people make roads to it. And then once a road is there, people will create other places along those roads. So we're seeing a, a, a strong correlation between roads, um, paths, and um, places. So using that assumption, we took the OSM road network data um, and looked at all the different highway types. And in New York City, computed an average uh, POI density per kilometer. So we just walked around the uh, areas where we, could, uh, where we could get to and then use Street View and Mapillary to try to just walk a block um, here and there and do get an average uh, to get a sense of how many places should be there. And this isn't perfect, but it gives us a baseline. Um, and then for every geohash, we computed the total distance of every type of road, then divided by these, and the math is pretty straightforward, right? Um, and you get a good estimate. The estimate for New York City looks like this. We got 100, about 185,000 expected, and this is covering all the boroughs as well. Um, you know, and so now that 39,000 that we saw earlier is put into context, and you start to see that a lot more data is needed in those areas. Um, again, this is just the first estimate, so, it, but it gives us a sense of completeness, and it gives us a sense of progress and what to shoot for. Um, so th this map shows, and we had, a, we had a blog post on this called Invisible Places on our streetcred.co blog. If you want to see more, we did this for a few other cities um, in the world. But the idea here is the colors show where there's more expected POIs um, for the darker areas and fewer in the lighter areas. Um, but the next step was, to me, I wanted to know more granularly for the OSM data um, what that looked like. And so I made a, a, tile, um, a tile set of the POIs that we collected from OSM and overlaid it with the expectation data that we had um, generated for each of the tile, for each of the geohashes, and then made a progress bar. So I, I wasn't trusting that the internet was going to do well here, but um, I used the observable tool, which Mapbox made. Thank you for putting that together. That tool is really awesome. It's kind of like Jupyter uh, Notebooks for Python, but for JavaScript and maps. It's pretty amazing if you haven't played with it. Uh, I suggest you go check it out. But it allowed me to create this 
map really quickly, um, bring in all the different tile sets, do the computation in real time in the map, and we can pan the map to other places and zoom in and out and get this uh, overlay. So imagine having a tool like this as a contributor and being able to see where you would have the most impact, or as a consumer of the data, being able to see where the data, where your users are going to have a really good experience versus uh, a really difficult one where they're not going to be able to find the places that they're looking for. And I'm, I'm sorry, it's a little hard to see. I know it's far away for some of you, but, um, but what that's showing is the pop-up shows the estimated um, prediction count and the uh, actual count in that area, and then the little progress bar shows the number, and the colors indicate where the progress is really good and where the, the lighter colors indicate where data needs more filling in. Um, this is also an observable notebook that I shared publicly, so if anybody wants to play around with this in New York City, right now it's just for the New York City data set, but this can be done, forked and done for other cities if you're curious about your city uh, and how OSM is stacking up um, there. So what's next? Um, next, we pull in more factors into this data, right? Building uh, heights, population density, uh, any other data sets that make sense to try to give us a little bit more uh, finesse on these numbers because the intention for the road network um, naive assumption was just to get a baseline. So we're gonna work towards getting that a little bit more refined. Um, also doing some predictive machine learning models where you can assume certain things about places um, with certain types of features and then make predictions about how many POIs should exist there or at least make predictions about the, the frequency of POIs on the road. Um, and then make these, make these tools public and open source so that others can put them out for, uh, for contributors to see um, to help drive collection. That's what we're going to be using these kinds of tools on our protocol to help drive contributions in different areas and to also help determine how much to compensate um, in different areas based on how complete the map is. Um, and the other thing that's next, uh, and just to talk a little bit more about what we're doing at StreetCred, um, right now we're running uh, a test in New York City. It's a contest to map NYC. Um, we're running it for a month. We're trying to learn about validation roles, um, trying to see how quickly people can go from an empty map to a filled in map, where people are gravitating towards um, to figure out uh, all of these different dynamics. And so. We're also trying to see if people are interested in crypto, and so we're compensating for this contest. Uh, for the top 100 winners uh, or best contributors, we're compensating in Bitcoin. People have been really excited about this. We're really seeing a diverse group of mappers. These are people that are not map, um, uh, they're not map enthusiasts. They're just av average consumers that have a mobile app on their phone. They're walking around. Um, it's kind of a mix between OpenStreetMap and Foursquare, if you will, you know, that kind of experience. But the leaderboard's really motivating. So, um, you know, Matt talked about potentially having leaderboards as a, as a motivator. I think that really does go a long way for people. Um, and we have a map. So this is, this is of this morning. Um, you know, we've collected almost 8,700 places at this point. We've been running for a little less than two weeks. Um, so we're... We're, we're on you know, a good pace. There's also a leaderboard. You could see how many points are pending and have been earned. And while this was happening, um, you know, we're all coming out here to Detroit, and a few people are from New York, Julian being one of them here in the audience, um, were worried about not getting their map NYC fix uh, while being away. And so they were wondering if we could bring this to Detroit as well. And we thought this is a great audience to share it with and to get your feedback since you guys are all um, pretty uh, familiar with data contribution and are you know enthusiasts of this uh, this type of thing. So yes, we can bring it to Detroit. Um, it's a little it was a little quick to put together, so that's um, that's what's happening. But basically, the app is open to the public. It's it's been in the store, um, so you could download it from for both iOS and Android. If you're curious to see what it looks like to add a place, you add a place and then at least two other people have to validate that place to say that it's good. So we're building validation into the system from the beginning. Um, so if you're curious to play around with it, we hope you do. And then um, as a contest, if you get 10 points or more earned on your profile, send us a screenshot via Twitter or email or Instagram, um, and we'll send you a t-shirt with 
our logo, which we're hopefully everybody's really excited about that. <laughs> um, and then keep using the app, and we'd love your feedback, like I said. Um, it's still very new, so we're, we're still learning and we're tweaking the validation and we're tweaking the parameters uh, and the data that we're collecting all the time, and we're hoping to learn a lot from all of you and from our users. Um, and tweet at us if you want us to do a Map NYC in your city soon. So that is it. I have the, the you can download it, like I said, from both, and then there's links to some of the materials that I mentioned, the blog post for Invisible Places, the observable notebook, uh, the Map NYC and Map Detroit pages, so you can get to those leaderboards and maps to see for yourself. Um, any questions? Yes? So for those points that are collected, are they banned? Oh, yes, great. Um, I meant to mention that. So for, the, for both of the contests, we're hoping to open the data after we're done collecting it. Um, and it's going to be open in an OSM compatible license. So that data can go into OSM freely. People can add that back. Um, we can figure out a way to you know, merge it into the data set. Um, our goal for the, for the street cred data set as well is to create something that's open and accessible um, and then have just the, the freshest data where the, the, the diff um, for the last n weeks or you know, we're still determining what that looks like. Um, that data will be monetizable and then everything else will be open um, under an accessible license. Any other questions? All right, thanks, grab stickers.